Hello again! This is a video of me making this hooded crop shirt with thumb holes. I began by embroidering my fabric. This was a challenge since the embroidery is quite thick, so I had to put on some iron-on stabilizer as well as the tearaway I use with the hoop. After embroidering, I cut away all of the iron-on stabilizer I could. My earlier attempt to embroider on this fabric left a bunch of black threads on it, but I cleaned it up before I sewed the whole thing together. I also needed to find a shirt pattern, but luckily I have one all cut up and ready to go. It's from the book Jokatyypin kaavakirja, which I think is only in English. I left the sleeves a bit longer than the pattern says, so that I could accommodate the thumb holes. When I cut out the back pattern piece, I used the front piece as a guide. I wanted the shirt to be lower on the back and shorter on the front. I just eyeballed the cut to get a nice curve to the back hemline. After that, I cut out the hood. One part is from the shirt fabric and another part is from the lace fabric. I wanted the hood to have a lace lining. I saw this idea a while back somewhere and I thought it would look cool and also I went to Annika Victoria's Facebook group which has these challenges and the August challenge was to incorporate lace into a design. Once I had cut out all the pieces, I started sewing the shirt together. In this project I used only the serger and the cover stitch machine. I started with sewing the hoods up. I searched the back seam of both the inner fabric and the lining fabric. Then I sewed the shoulder seams together. This is the way I like to construct a uh, shirt. Uh, first the shoulders, then adding the sleeves and after that I will sew the side seam and the sleeve together. This way I don't have to be so exact with the sleeve. It usually just fits perfectly as opposed to when I used to sew shirts at a younger age and the sleeve would never fit correctly. There would be these awful bumps at the shoulder when Either the sleeve part or the shirt part would stretch a bit when I was sewing them together. It is also faster do doing the, it this way uh, since I usually had to make a basting stitch when fitting the sleeve to its place. Now I just can serge away. This is me trying it on to see how it fits and I think it fit perfectly, just tight enough the look I was going for. Next I had to sew the sleeves with thumb holes. I just hemmed the sleeves seam so that there would be a clean edge for my thumb to push through. Then I searched the rest of the seam together and made a hem where my other fingers would come through. As you can see I used the cover stitch machine so that it made the straight stitches on the inside of my garment and the decorative stitches on the outside. I love this look and it is the reason I ever bought a cover stitch machine. I just haven't been using the, it that much. And here is a close-up of how the sleeves turned out. I kind of love the thumb holes. I loved them before this project also. I put so much decorative stitches on this you wouldn't believe and here I am trying to sew a decorative stitch to the side seam but was unable to get it up to the thumb hole because the sleeve was not very uh, wide so I actually put decorative stitching on the hood also on the back seam but Regrettably, I only thought of this after I had attached the lining to the front of the hood. Next, I sewed another decorative stitching along the edge of the hood to keep the lining and top part of the hood together. I also hand-stitched the back seams of the hood parts together 
so that the lining wouldn't shift away from its place when I was wearing it. After that, I just had to attach the hood to the rest of the shirt and stitch a decorative stitch onto the ne neckline of the shirt. Then I hemmed the shirt and I was done! I love how this one turned out. I want to have something a bit more goth to wear at the gym, although the season for cropped tops is over now in Finland. Now it's just cold weather all the way. Uh, the machine embroidery design is from Urban Threads. The link will be in the description box. And the fabric for the shirt was some random one I had bought many many years ago. Uh, the piece was too small for me to make a longer hooded shirt, but it could have been a long top or a plain shirt without the hood. Or maybe a top. The lace is a present I got from a secret Santa a few years back in a Finnish sewing group. I'll be linking Annika Victoria and her Facebook group below as well. You can come and join us and accept the DIY challenges every month. This month the theme is patchwork. <laughs> I have no idea what I'll be doing. So, what did I learn from this project? Well, the uh, hood pattern I used was actually a pattern I had cut up previously, which I just found in my UFO pile, so it really didn't fit the shirt, so I might have <laughs> or should have used a hood pattern that fits the exact shirt pattern, but oh well, live and learn. And well, also when you have a thick embroidery, you really really need to use a thick stabilizer. Well, that may be all I learned from this project. Well, I love how it turned out and I love the cover stitch machine. Uh, I use Bernina by the way. If you want to know, I'll put the link to that one also on the description box. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!